it's, it's vigilante. He's trying to be helpful. I don't mean to be a prick. You went to prison and I did. Are you a psychiatrist? What? Then don't tell me what's normal. Get the fuck out of here. I was about to get as if I become a racist by osmosis. Dude, I'm your best friend. There you go. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley of Van Cosplay and I forgot to film an intro before I took my entire cosplay off. It's gonna be a ring light and my glasses, but like I feel like I'm about to give like the next Apple presentation in this get up. <laughs> Hello, I am here to introduce the iPhone 23. Anyway, long story short, I have a new favorite character and I decided it would be a great idea to build the whole thing in two days because what else should I do on a free weekend? It's a lot of fun to make. It was a really nice build, especially kind of like get me back into the armor making thing for some bigger builds. I planned this year. And this video is gonna take you through my whole process from making my patterns to like building and painting the thing. But you could save some time and use my free patterns. They're gonna be in the link in the description below. Seriously, use them. It took me a lot of time and struggling to make them. So honestly, I would just start with them. You can easily scale them up or down to fit your size. And honestly, I think they're pretty adaptable to any body type. They're very simple and they're not like form fitting or like go all the way around your limbs and stuff. And even the chest piece I make completely flat. So it's just like really adaptable to a lot of body types. If you do use them, be sure to tag me, especially because I just want to see what you're working on and how you use it. It'd be really cool. And if you appreciate all the time and effort that went into it, there's also a link to my coffee below where you can leave a little tip. So anyway, that's that. Let's get into building a vigilante cosplay. <laughs> All right, I got right into this by making patterns directly on my body. I do this by wrapping whatever part of my body in cling wrap and then either putting duct tape or, um, oh my God, what's it called? Masking tape. I prefer masking tape because it's easier to draw on, but I put that over top. You're going to see this process a lot and it's going to get very repetitive, but yeah, I'm just drawing the shape on my arm and kind of referencing a lot of photos, figuring out what I like, and then I'll eventually cut this out and use it as my pattern. Very carefully, I cut that little cast thing off my body and I can flatten it out and cut out this shape here that I'm going to use as a pattern for like the little wrist guard thing. I won't go this far into detail on every single piece because this is seriously repeated for like every small piece that isn't like the chest piece. But I take that pattern I cut out and transfer it to some paper that I can use as the actual pattern. That's because I'm going to go back to this piece that I cut out from my arm and I'm going to draw the detail pieces on top of that to make sure it all fits. Then I cut these little puzzle PC detail pieces out because I'm going to cut those out on a thinner foam that'll go on top of that base piece. I'm going back to the good old cling wrap. This is a little dramatic because I don't think I needed to do this for the hand, but it's just easier. So I did that just for the back of my hand to draw out the little piece that'll go on top of the glove. And once again, I'm transferring that pattern to paper before I go ahead and cut out the detail shape on top of it. And back to the cling wrap again. Like I said before, this is repeated a lot, but I'll just show this again and breeze through it. And I guess I just like fell over here. Here I am just drawing the shape of the shin out and yeah, I'm wearing Sonic slippers. They're really cool. Then I cut that piece out that I just drew on my leg. I apparently don't have any video footage of me transferring this to paper, but yeah, I did for the pattern and then I'm just going over it and drawing all those little detail shapes that I can also use as patterns. So yeah, I think, are you getting this process now? <laughs> he has this little like thigh piece. I, I don't even know what it is. Just like some extra flair. I don't know, but I could have just measured it out and cut it out of foam, but honestly, it's just easier to see it for scale. So I use this same technique, even though it's a like simpler piece, but I don't know. It's a good technique to learn, okay? As you can see, I flattened that out too and made it a little template so I can add some little detail pieces on top of that. But again, all these templates are included so you can kind of just like skip over this if you want. Apparently I did stop filming because it got so repetitive. I did the knees off camera, but um, yeah, you get the idea. Anyway, I got all those little pieces done and I decided I would just go ahead and transfer them to five millimeter foam and kind of knock them out before I tackle the rest of the armor. 
Literally all of this armor is on 5mm foam, except for the detail pieces on top, which is on 2mm foam. And I just went to Hobby Lobby and picked up this like unbranded roll of foam when I usually order online, but I was just like doing this last minute, so I got this roll of 5mm foam and I also got 2mm craft foam sheets. I got it in black because I'm actually not going to paint this black. I'm just going to use the color of this foam as the armor because it's like the perfect shade of not quite black. It's matte and it like really matches what's on screen well. So if you do that, just be really careful to not mark up the foam much. I decided to Dremel and sand the edges of the 5mm foam pieces to be a little bit like beveled so that they can have a little bit more like realism to them and not look so foxy. And I did this in my bathroom because it's like easier to clean up and also my cat kept trying to eat all the foam. And now that all the 5mm foam base pieces are ready, I took all these little detail pieces I had cut out and transferred them to 2mm foam. I marked all of these to keep them labeled and keep them organized because some of the pieces start to look really similar so just try to be organized with it um, and just like take your time with it. To be honest, there is a lot of room for error between cutting out the patterns and like, well, tracing them, cutting them out. The lines kind of get moved around a bit, so these pieces might not fit together perfectly. I had to do some trimming and editing, and when I digitized the pattern, I tried to clean them up a bit, but you may have to trim a little extra to get them to fit right. It's just kind of like the nature of the material. Also, don't trim them until you see them on the piece. The piece is curved, so it's going to look wrong when it's flat, but yeah, just do some trial and error. Once you lay everything out and it's looking good, you can use contact cement to start applying these pieces. I just kind of applied the contact cement to everything and didn't really be very precise about it. You could like lay out the pieces and trace them so you know exactly where it'll go, but I was just kind of being a going crazy here, I guess. So that kind of covers how to assemble all the pieces with the details on top, but I want to cover how to do these like scored lines on pieces like the thighs, and I label them in my pattern with a dashed line. I lightly use a pencil to transfer those score lines to the foam, and then what you do is you use your blade to cut into the foam but not completely through it. Then you take a heat gun and just like blast the crap out of the piece of foam until those lines start to open up and you get these awesome details. You'll also use the heat gun on just about every piece to get it to curve and fit your body better. I especially use it on the knees because I made them flat but I just hit it really hard with the heat gun and press them in and around my knees to get them to curve a little bit. Then for strapping all these pieces, I used like multiple yards of elastic for it because just about every piece needs at least one or two strips of elastic and you'll just measure it out on your body and take your time with it. To attach all these elastic pieces, I put down a bunch of hot glue, stuck my elastic on it, and then took a little strip of 2mm foam, put a bunch of hot glue on that, and sandwiched it on top. So it's like a little foam sandwich. But it works really well for holding elastic, and none of it has popped off yet, so fingers crossed. You can use elastic on the hand armor too, but I don't really like doing that, so I just stuck the foam like right onto the glove I had. It's just a really cheap, like, a uh, phone usable whatever glove from Amazon. I think he probably has like motorcycle gloves or something, but I just got the cheapest thing and uh, yeah, I just glued it right on top of it while wearing the glove, which is super smart. Um, but yeah, just be careful. The next day, I decided to finally tackle the front and the back piece. I went back to the good old cling wrap and covered my whole upper body with it and the masking tape. I did my front and back, which is so much easier if someone else is around to help you. But I just really needed to make sure I covered one half of my body really well because I was just going to mirror the pattern and make sure it was all symmetrical and nice. So yeah, this is a little trickier by myself, but I made it work. Like I said, I was only going to do one half of this and mirror the pattern, so I drew a line right down the center and tried to roughly draw one down the back as well, and then I just marked out the general shape that I wanted this to be. I tried to make it as accurate as possible, but obviously I've got a little bit more in the bust area, so I had to adapt it just a little bit, but honestly I think it's still pretty true to what the actual design is, and I did make it flat, so this can work on just about any body type. Oh yeah, I should mention I was wearing like my undersuit for the actual costume under this, which is just a basic like thermal compression shirt, nothing fancy, um, and I, just, I very carefully cut myself out of it.
It looks like a freaking mess here, but yeah, I just kind of tightened up the lines a little bit and then cut out that shape. So I was trying to figure out how exactly this went on, but uh, there is a scene in the show which I think every character should show how they take off their armor from here on out because it made it so much easier to figure out. But he literally takes off all of his armor like by pulling it forward. So I realized that the back of the armor is open, everything else is like one continuous piece, and I think it is like closed with a zipper, but that's a little hard for me, so I did a different attachment, but yeah, the idea is that this is going to be one whole piece and the back is going to be open. I transferred this flat pattern to my 5mm foam and then you'll see I flip it over and mirror it. Um, it connects in the front so that way the front is going to be solid and the back is obviously like kind of splayed and open, but yeah, you'll see the shape of this. Also, in the patterns I digitized, I just made it one whole piece so you're not going to have to mirror anything, but this is just for reference if you want to make your own. And then I just cut everything out all regular, but I do want to draw attention to the neck area. It's marked on the pattern and I want to show you how to do this 45 degree angle cut because this is how you attach the little collar piece. So you're going to want to hold your blade at a 45 degree angle when you cut this circular neck piece. You're going to want to kind of like, ugh, God, I don't know how to explain it. You angle it inward to the foam. So essentially when you pull the foam out, the cut is going to be like, it'll be beveled underneath, if that makes sense. You'll see, see how I'm like holding it. I'm so awful at explaining this. But yeah, you're going to hold it at an angle like facing into your armor piece. Yeah, <laughs> I think it'll make more sense shortly when I show the collar. And here it is, cut out and in place. So you can already see that it's starting to look pretty cool. The heat gun like comes in clutch on this thing. Obviously it was just a big floppy piece, so I heated it up a bunch and like started to form it so it actually fit to my chest and my back. Um, I didn't make this, for lack of a better word, I did not make this booby armor, <laughs> but I did use some heat and like curved it around the chest area so it wasn't like sticking up all weird, but um, I don't know, depending on what you like or like, yeah, your body, you might want to do it just so the edges don't stick out, but yeah, I don't know, this is my way around doing it. I don't like booby armor, but this looks cool. And I just used a bunch of tape to close up the back for now, that way I could pattern out the collar and just like get a better idea of what I was working with. So this was the little collar piece I was talking about and why we cut the 45 degree angle. I'm already giving all these patterns to you, but if you make your own and need to pattern your own collar, you could take a piece of paper, put it on the inside, and use some like sewing pins to just stick it in there and then trace the shape of your collar. I trace that collar piece onto 5mm foam, but when it comes to cutting it out, that's where we need to do another 45 degree angle. I cut every edge normally, but on the bottom section that actually attaches to the collar part of the armor, we need to do a 45 degree angle in the opposite direction. So you're going to hold your blade facing like away from the collar. That way these two 45 degree angles meet up and it'll sit exactly right. And then I just attached it with some contact cement. There's a second larger collar that was a little bit trickier, but I just used a piece of paper and kind of like folded it until I had the right shape and made a pattern. I made this collar two separate mirrored pieces, that way there can be that open seam in the back, which is how I'm going to get in and out of the armor. These were some tricky patterns I've never had to do before, so I was really proud of how this came out, and I think it looks like pretty spot on. Like I said, I'm almost positive it's a zipper closure in the back in the show, but because that's so hard for me to do on my own, I just did little strips of elastic with Velcro that affixed to the other side. So it was like close enough. It's not completely closed in the back, but it's easier for me to get in and out of. I measured out the V-shaped details on the front and then I scored it with my little knife guy because then I would use my heat gun to open up those seams. Um, it's not quite as dramatic as like the other parts of the armor where there's like 2mm foam layered on top, so I liked the way this looked. For the shoulder areas that actually does most of the work keeping this on my body, I decided to cut apart the straps off a backpack I got at the thrift store because um, it was kind of just close enough. It's a BP backpack, the only other options were Fortnite and Minecraft and that felt like sacrilegious to cut apart. 
They're a little bit thick on my shoulders, but I really like this because it's adjustable and it's really comfy and it worked out pretty well. This part might not be completely necessary, but I ended up cutting the straps, cutting a little piece out of them. That way I can like make them a little bit more L-shaped. That way they could curve around my shoulders and like curve under my arm and like it was just a better shape to work with so that it could fit my armor better. I don't know, it was maybe a little dramatic. And I just used my sewing machine to stitch these straps back together with this like new shape to them. And Gabe helped me. But I set those aside so I could pattern the shoulders, which I did just like every single other piece. Yeah, I don't have much to say here because you've seen me do this process like 20 times already. So I'm not going to lie, I just traced my Homelander belt and used that as a pattern. I just kind of put more of a deep V in the front of it because it was already like the perfect shape and why reinvent it if it already exists. And then I just added details of 2mm foam and did a little bit of scoring and heat gun action. To close the belt in the back, I did a strip of elastic with some velcro that then attaches to velcro on the inside of the other side and then the strap is completely invisible in the back. He has some weird detail pieces on like the abdomen and I just cut strips of elastic and put little 2mm foam details on them and eventually I just hot glued it directly to my compression shirt. And then for painting, I just used a different mix of silver acrylic paints to do all the little silver pieces first. And then I dry brushed some black acrylic paint over top of that to make it look a little like tarnished and weathered. For the rest of the armor, I used Plaid FX Smooth Satin whatever smooth satin finish yeah in blue and white um i don't know how i feel about this paint just yet i love the blue the white was tricky i probably should have primed it first for the white but i ended up doing like four or five coats of the white on all these phrase details and i did it really carefully um i just kind of had to be more patient than i was wanting to be <laughs> But it does feel really nice to finally see these white detail pieces against the black. It makes all the hard work like finally pay off. To get the perfect shade of blue, I used that Plaid FX blue paint, mixed it with a little bit of white and a little bit of green, and things are looking pretty cool. And I totally forgot to film it, but I did weather all of the pieces with some dry brushed black acrylic. Um, you'll see that in the final product, but I don't have footage of it. And while the paint dried, I literally learned the dance to the intro for the show because I, it felt like a requirement. Okay, now that the paint was dry, I applied those like backpack straps on top with some hot glue, um, and yeah, things are coming together. I basically glued these backpack straps onto the armor backwards from what it would be on a backpack. So as you can see, I put the little tiny pieces up in the bottom of the front and I left the adjustable parts because this made it really nice to get the armor snug on my body. It's really comfy. I hot glued two mag pouches to the front and okay, look at this, look how cool the adjustable part is. <laughs> Just like strap that baby on nice and tight, <laughs> it's so nice. Um, the mag pouches are a little large, I can't tell if it's just because I'm smaller or I don't know. I got the cheapest ones I could find on Amazon and it's fine with me for now. And I did attach the shoulders to the chest piece with a little bit of elastic. Uh, they fit pretty snugly so it didn't need a super amount of attachment. And then I just hot glued those little pieces onto the front of my shirt and like the whole thing was done. I'm so freaking happy with this armor. I think it turned out really clean and it looks really nice. I like how it adapted to my body too. It's just really cool. Oh, and um, James Gunn liked it too. So I guess I have that validation. What are you doing? If I keep changing my facial expressions, 
He won't be able to recognize me in a lineup. I'm really tired. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope it can be a little bit helpful and you can use some of these ideas on your own project. Be sure to tag me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. They're all below. I just love to see what you're working on, especially if you use some of these patterns. I'll see you guys next time.